Hi and welcome to Mark's Motivational Podcast, another Authors Tuesday. Tonight I'm delighted to be joined by another great author, Carol Weekland. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yes. (laughs) You're very welcome on to the show. Thanks a lot for joining me. Thank you so much. I'm so happy and thrilled to be here. Great stuff. Thank you. Uh, So we might just start off the podcast. You want to tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and uh, the books you've written will be brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so literally, I am very much a person who is a voracious reader. I, you know, also write. And then I am a nature enthusiast. I love being out in nature and I teach about nature. So these are all really important parts of my life. I also teach about these things as well. Right. Yeah. Um, I love working with adults and children uh, in different classes and inspiring them. I think this is really important, especially right now when things seem a little chaotic in the world, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, but I really think, you know, through the means of writing the different books and through teaching, I really have a wonderful way to connect with others. Um, you said to talk a little bit about the books. Yeah. I have a series uh, called Morgan of Avalon, which is basically a reimagining of the legends of King Arthur and Morgan Le Fay, looking at them more as if they are divine partners that come together to create peace, uh, you know, a masculine and feminine presence in a very war-torn time, which everyone can sort of, you know, associate with right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then also, I have for children uh, a series called the Magical Being series, which there's the Dragon's Breath book, which just came out. This is the one I think you originally contacted me about. Uh, And then there's also Secrets of the Flower Fairies. And then later this year, there will be a unicorn one as well. Uh, That's for like very young children. Yeah, yeah. And then for teenagers, I have two books. I have Land of the Twilight Mist, which is an angel fantasy which Mm -hmm. takes place very much where I grew up. So, you know, maybe we'll get a chance to talk more about that later. Uh, And then there's also The Adventures of Maid Marian, Healer of Sherwood Forest, which just came out. It's a re-release of a book that came out two years ago. Uh, So this is a new look once again at Maid Marian, where she actually is a vital part of Robin Hood and his merry band. She's actually a healer in it. Great. So that gives that's, you an idea. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Like, uh, you've got such a wide range of different books, you, 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 topics you write about. So that's amazing. Thanks a lot for sharing that. And do you have any of the books you, you'd like to, to show? Because this will go on yes. YouTube as well. So if you want to show the books, that would be brilliant. I should have done that while I was announcing them. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, sorry, I should have actually done it. It's my fault. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah. we started off with the Morgan of Avalon series, and I hope you can see that right yeah. there. And that's a three-book series. Uh, the first book is called Dream Spell, and then there's Child of Destiny and Epiphany. Those are the three books. My apology. No, that's fine. Let me that's just fine. get that off. That's and fine. then the Maid Marian book is right here. This is the first edition of it. The new edition has a different color. It's very much a green background with the forest behind her. That was just re-released on December 24th. So it's brand new. Uh, And then Land of the Twilight Mist. This is the angel fantasy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the children's books. These are all my artwork in this. This is the Dragon's Breath book. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then Secrets of the Flower Fairies. This one actually won uh, the cover award, a silver medal, uh, two years wow. ago. That's so, great. I can see you. why. That's that's brilliant. That looks absolutely excellent. Awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. um, you, you, and you kind of uh, do the, um, the illustrations as well, Carol? I do for the children's books. I have not attempted to do that for the adult books. I think I can maybe manage it for kids, but not for adults. (laughs) Yeah, that's great. Great stuff. No, they look look brilliant. And they're available on Amazon. They are, all of them, yes. Uh, People can also go to my website if they're interested. That's Mm -hmm. my name, Carol, C-A-R-O-L, W-E-A-K-L-A-N-D, 
www.maidmarianmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsmartinsm
Yeah. Uh, and that would be E.B. White, the great E.B. White, who wrote Charlotte's Web, The Trumpet of the Swan. And once again, you'll notice these are all animals and nature, you know, so that for me as a child was yeah. so, so inspiring. And then as an adult, you know, this will not come as a surprise, J.R.R. Tolkien <laughs> is my, my favorite, favorite, favorite of all. So yes, great question. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Because the Charlotte's Web, like that's a famous movie that they made out of that as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. did. And then of course Tolkien with all the great Lord of the Rings movies and the Hobbit movies as well. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. great. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. Yeah. No, I agree you hundred percent there. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's brilliant. And um kind of how was the COVID situation? Uh, did that really affect your writing much? Um because oh. I know like being and not being able to go that far at the time? It was very challenging uh, here in the United States, at least yeah. my part of the United States. Yeah. We were only allowed to have one person in a household go out to get oh. things like groceries. And I have to admit, I would sneak out into the park. <laughs> Oh, you have to, yeah. And so I can say that now with impunity, you know, and I would <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Get, get my nature fix at that time, <laughs> yeah. my inspiration and my writer's Definitely, block. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the other thing I was doing for finances at that time was doing audiobook narration. And that literally slammed to a close mm. because everyone that suddenly didn't have work decided they wanted to do an audiobook narration. <laughs> And so <laughs> yeah. literally, you know, I had been narrating for other people and that just went. Oof. So like everyone, it was a matter of being very, very creative mm -hmm. uh, to try and think about how the money was going to be coming in during that very difficult time. And that's really when I started doing the teaching. And what I tried to do was teach online the things that were in my books and that kind of married them all together. So that was the best way to get through it for me. <laughs> no, that's absolutely brilliant for anybody who's listening, you know, to kind of think of what stuff you can kind of help other people with. Uh, yes. You know, think of your own talents that you can help other people, you know, to gain more confidence. It's absolutely true because everyone is creative in their own way. And I know, you know, people, some of the people I work with say, no, I am not. And I'm like, yes, you are. You yeah, have yeah. to think, you know, really think about what you love, what it is you yeah. love to do. And there is creativity in that in some way mm -hmm. that you can in turn inspire others with, just like we were talking about. So, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, no, well done to you for that. That's that's brilliant. Really, really brilliant. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's great. And um. Uh, I was going to ask you as well. Uh, could you maybe talk about the the children bo children's book for for a minute, sure. just to, uh, for it. people that are listening? Because I, I I wrote my first children's book there recently, Did so I've got an interest in that myself. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> wonderful. Now I cannot believe this. I forgot to turn my phone off, and no, suddenly fine. everyone no is calling me. <laughs> it's, it's always the way. It's Murphy's law when you're <laughs> when you're doing these things. It, it? is Murphy's law. All <laughs> yeah. right. So, um, do you want me? How do you want me to talk about the children's books? Like what they are or how yeah. I got them published or what would you like are you just what, what they are please it'd be great sure. you know just, um you know what it'd be great because okay. I have, having children of my own like it's always good to See. think about yeah absolutely so secrets of the flower fairies is me going out into nature and looking at all the different flowers and I don't know if I can like show some of the pictures inside, whether they can be seen or not. Yeah, I no, always see them perfect. Um, but you know, you great. look into like the rose and some people can literally imagine, you know, faces in there and the idea yeah. of a fairy that might have the gifts of the rose in there. This mm -hmm. is where this whole book came from, Secrets of the Flower Fairies, how each of those different flowers has a fairy in it that has a special gift to give to people and then as the book goes along it gets the child to think what are my special gifts then just like the fairy has that I can share with the world as well and that's kind of what this whole book does and um, they really you know they liked it like I said it did get a, a cover award uh, back in 2019 a silver mm -hmm. medal yeah. 
So I was very, very proud of that. And then the Dragon's Breath book is still very new. I'm going to submit it for some awards uh, in this coming year. And this one is very much about the idea that every child, special dragon that stays with them like a friend, a guide, and yeah. that when that child, I'm going to show some of the pictures. When the that illustrations child, are brilliant as well. Yeah. Yes, thank you. When that child is upset or feeling down, that they can literally kind of just talk to that dragon and that dragon will help them understand that deep down inside they have this you know this wonderful creative force within them this magic that they can literally bring themselves out of any dark or negative situation so this is very much a spiritual and a kind of like a, an empowering book for young kids that are feeling like i don't know you know here i am in lockdown like you were talking about and mm-hmm. i just feel like i can't do anything this is like telling them go inside Think about the wonderful things you can do and you can go and create and do anything. That's the whole idea with this one. Wow. So the dragons are very inspirational. (laughs) That's really, really empowering for for, kids. That's that's, because that's the first word that came to my mind was empowering for for kids. So that's that's brilliant. Congratulations. That's great. So you see the difference. You know, dragons are thought of as powerful, empowering. And then the fairies are the creative, the very creative ones. You know, what kind of gifts do you have to share with the world? That's a good way of looking at it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, well done. <laughs> the best of luck with them, you know, the best of luck with them. And um, um, do, do you, you want to talk about yours. Yeah, do you want to talk about, yeah, thank you. Do you want to talk about the Robin Hood one as well? Absolutely. (laughs) I wish I had, I don't have the new cover one yet. Unfortunately, it's still so new, but I will like hold this up again. Um, But this one is so different because I had always felt Mary Marian never was really allowed to do anything in that series other than to be his true love, you know, Robin's true love. Yeah. And I know now, like in recent TV shows, she's like out with a bow and arrow, and that does not suit me at all. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. no, she's got to be something more than that. And so I started seeing her as someone that would come in and start mending up everyone in that merry band. You know, I have her in this book as if she's been trained by her mother to mend broken bones, to know about salves, you know, because we're back in the dark times, the Middle Ages, Mm -hmm. and things like that. Now, as the story goes on, I didn't mention earlier that I'm a healer. I work with Reiki energy. I don't know if you're familiar with Reiki. Yeah, that's right. But as the story goes on, she literally starts tapping into this universal energy that everyone has the ability to tap into. So when things get really dire in this story, literally, like at the beginning, Robin saves her. But it comes to a point where he is about to be hung and she ends up being the one that ends up with the band, Mary Band, saving him. And then he's severely wounded. So she has to save him. But it's not with traditional medicine at that point. For the first time, she's using her hands and she starts healing him in that manner. And this is an ongoing series. So I'm already into writing the second book in it. Which will be taking place in Nottingham during the plague with her as a healer in it. So it's going to be very different. (laughs) It's not necessarily factual time period when the plague was, but I think it's really, you know, something important that the people will enjoy hearing and reading. So. Yeah, that, that's incredible that, that's really really good because you know I've, I've i've done the tapping you know i, I find it find it great you know so oh wonderful um, yes yeah, yeah, so, so you know what i'm talking about about really, the energies really, and the way they flow yeah. Yeah. wonderful yeah wonderful brilliant. wonderful no that, that's brilliant no thanks a lot for sharing that carol that's great my I'm, pleasure I'm, I'm i love looking, it yeah looking forward to um sharing them on the show notes with people to find as well 
Thank you. <laughs> yeah. well, thank you very much. Yeah, and um, no, this is great. Thank you. And um, can I just ask you as well a few of your favorites, if that's okay? Um, your your favorite favorite um books to read yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, you know, for the children, yeah, yeah. it's very much Charlotte's Web, The Trumpet of the Swan. Those are the ones that stick with me, you know, from the, the earliest days. Um, for adults, definitely like the whole Lord of the Rings series, you know, everything from Fellowship onwards are so something that I come back to almost on a yearly basis, <laughs> I have to admit. And it's, people can say, but there's so much war and conflict, but I look at it from the perspective, uh, you know, and this is like very much present in the, the Robin Hood series and the, uh, the Morgan of Avalon series, where yes, there's that war going on, but there are these beings that are working through it and creating these incredible you know, things to bring about the peace movement and create that peace during that time period. And I think that's what I love to see the most, the people that are working on that opposite end that are not creating the war, that are bringing about the peace. So. Brilliant. Yeah, no, that, that sounds great. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah. And your favorite movie as well. Do you have a favorite film? <laughs> I'm going to sound so repetitious. It's like, can I think of anything other than Lord of the Rings? Oh, no, you know, it's oh, you know, it's, it's um, over the holidays. I'll just let you know uh, what I watched with my family. So these are Christmas movies, but yeah. uh, it's a very old classic called, called Going My Way with Bing Crosby. I don't know if you know it. Yeah, very yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, um, what were the other ones? Prancer, which is a beautiful story about a little girl and a reindeer, which is just so again inspirational. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, this I hope this doesn't get into into the secular side, but I watched with uh, my family Jesus of Nazareth as well, which is okay. brilliant from. Um, Franco Seffarelli, which it's like a six hour series that was about the story of Jesus way back in the 1970s. And we watched that together just for inspiration, literally, because like yeah. I said, things are so can be so dark looking right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's yeah. nice to pull yourself out of that and just kind of bring yourself up. So, you know, these are just one of many movies that I would say are my favorites, kind of running the gambit. Um, but there are so many others out there. It's just my mind isn't going to them oh, right now. Those are the ones that are recent. So that's yeah. why they're there. <laughs> and can I just ask as well, like, you know, with the way you're saying, um, you know, you're a teacher of Reiki. Um, yes. Any books that um, that you would recommend um, mm -hmm. to, to, that you've read yourself on that subject? Yes. Now, there are a couple. Uh, William Rand, R-A-N-D. Uh, yeah. He's from the International School of Reiki Training. Uh, he has written manuals and guidebooks on Reiki. So that would be one. Okay. There is also the Asui, that's U-S-U-I. Um, oh, handbook of Reiki. It's somewhat something like that title, and I can send that to you if you want because I can't quite remember the exact. No, that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a really wonderful one that talks about the founder of Reiki and the ways he utilized it, different hand positions. Uh, different, you know, not that you necessarily have to be lying on a table, you can be lying on the floor, you can be seated in a chair. He does a lot of different things in that that people don't necessarily think of. So that's another good one. Yeah, that's great. Thanks very much. Yeah, because um, yeah, no, great because people will be listening to this might think that, you know, it'd be too good to find out about it, you know, who have an interest. I better point out not only is Maid Marian a healer, but yeah. Morgan of Avalon is too. I'm like, I better bring that home. So oh, yeah. she yeah. literally, you know, is in this book consistently doing healings, you know, of King Arthur, of, you know, different beings. So Brilliant. that's in a lot of my, a lot of what I write. Yeah. No, that, that's great to bring that into it as well, because you're, you're utilizing your, your um, experience as well in these books. Exactly. So that, I know. Yeah. 
This is what people told me. This book series started, uh, the Morgan Ava Avalon series started in 2011. So they've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. And I was told by people that read it, this is really one of the first books that actually had the way the energy healing occurs written down in it. So if you know, this person is interested in reading about that, and how it works. It may seem as if it's a purely fictional piece of work, but it has many truths in it as well. Wow. That's good to know. Great stuff. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I love that. That's brilliant. Yeah. Really Thank good. You. Yeah. And can I just ask as well, Carol, what's your favorite kind of music to listen to as well? You know, oh, when you're, when you're relaxing. <laughs> well, you'll love this uh, Celtic. <laughs> Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, people like Lorena McKennett, uh, you know, and of course the Celtic women, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, people like that. I really enjoy. Yes. Great stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> I knew you'd enjoy that. No, I am so obs obsessed with the Celtic with, I know you can tell from what I write yeah, <laughs> with yeah. the UK. Yes. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever, um, listen to music when you write yes a lot and so you know i can have that playing in the background and that's very very inspirational to me so it's you know the very melodic usually uh celtic music great it yes does that for me yes yeah because i agree with you there because it's um i've only started doing it recently where you listen to music when you write it kind of makes a, a flow get into that flow state it really that? does. It gets you, you know, I always think of writing as a meditative state for me almost, and it gets yeah. you into that so much easier. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. Yeah. And there, uh, you know, that's great. Thank you. And your, your, <laughs> favorite, your favorite places to travel as well, Carol? Oh, again, sounding repetitious, the UK. <laughs> okay, yes, so yes. I literally, uh, in Ireland, I've been to Northern Ireland. I've been to uh, the Belfast area at a time when it was very, very open uh, to people coming in. This was years ago. Uh, and my family was actually doing research. Uh, we, the Mitchell clan, which I'm a part of, um, was Scott Irish. So they were forced from Scotland to Ireland and then they settled in that area. So what's what we did? We traveled in that upper Northern Ireland area. Uh, and then in the UK, in uh, England, I should say, in Scotland, I was going to all the areas that are in my books. So Thank Glastonbury, you. you know, being yeah. one, you know, over into Nottingham, you know, into all those areas, Sherwood Forest, uh, into up into Scotland, Arthur C, you know, places like that. Oh, and Cadbury, of course, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes, lovely. Yeah, because yeah, it's great to visit the places you have in your book. So that, that's 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 yeah, what, it's that's it great. helps so much because you're walking the land, you can feel the land. You know, I, I told you I'm a nature person. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you mm -hmm. see the trees, you see the birds, you know, it just it gives you so much more perspective. And then you can talk to the people of that area too. And yeah. it is so helpful because they can take, you know, if you're writing about a legend, they can take you way back because, mm -hmm. oh, well, did you know this about Merlin? Did you know this about King Arthur? You know, they, believe me. <laughs> In yeah. Wales, I found that to be so true because I was scouting out, you know, one of Merlin's caves in Wales and the people there, they would just, they'd go on and on and on. And it was fascinating, you know, what they had heard and what they knew. So, yeah. yeah. You'll have to pay a visit to Dublin sometime as well. To I can't around. wait. I'm, yes, and I'll, I'll look you up. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. Yeah, like, uh, it's great to travel because it really uh, broadens the, your mind, doesn't it? It does. It helps you know that there's more than just your neighborhood around there. You know, there's a whole big world and it is so different everywhere so yes yeah very perfect. important yeah no thanks a lot for that and mm -hmm. can I just ask as well um you know I really appreciate you coming on the podcast it's been great and I'm looking forward to sharing your work um on the mm -hmm. show notes um if you could kind of in a sentence uh for people that are listening um the best way to keep yourself motivated in life and writing could you what would you say in, in one sentence please carol 
Once again, go out into nature and allow yourself to receive messages, insights from nature and be inspired and then inspire others with what you received. That's what I would say. Brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. No, it's been great having you on, Carl. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and uh, I wish you all the success going forward with all your all you do and your writing and your Thank books, you. your great books. I am so grateful to you too. This has been wonderful. I've so enjoyed speaking with you and, yeah. uh, you know, I can't wait to, uh, you know, connect with you again in the future, maybe in person. <laughs> yeah. No, you'd be always welcome back on the podcast um, to, to talk about any book, to promote any work you're doing. Would be great. And so what's next? Have you anything else um, lined yes. up? Yes. Yes. In the, This is completely different. I am you know, literally working with a theme about Merlin again, yeah. but it is taking it up into space. So this is more of a galactic kind of story. It's something, if you want to think Star Wars, I have never done before, but it's the idea of Merlin as a unifier during a great war of Lyra uh, and Draco, okay? And this is completely different than I have ever done before so yeah. it's going slowly but surely <laughs> great stuff you know the best look with it sounds great thank you so, thank it's good to throw your hands a lot of different type of stuff isn't it D different yes subjects, indeed yeah. and can I just ask you have, do you ever get involved in any writers groups yourself um for your writing Yes, I'm in char or in uh, I should say involved with a couple on Facebook. Both yeah. of them are very much, you know, children's authors. I haven't really gone, you know, for like the fantasy author ones yet, which I must. Yeah. Uh, but I have found that Facebook offers a lot of wonderful different groups. Yeah, so. yeah. There's a really good one that's that's um that I, I joined during lockdown. Um, it's the Ink Slingers. It's a Dublin based one. But there's oh, people I'll... from all over the world that join. And, Wonderful. Um, I'll look that up. Thanks yeah, yeah, I'll send you the details. Um, Thank you. Uh, and uh, no, it's really good because, you know, what the way it works is it's done off prompts every week. Like you have, a, you can give a prompt and you have a half an hour to write off that prompt. And the stories that come out, Carl, are, are really, really good, you know. I bet. That sounds fascinating. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's I really love good. it. No, Carol, I really appreciate coming on. And again, I wish you all the success going forward. And I wish you all the success going forward as well. And thank you for having me on your podcast. Thank I you. really enjoyed it. Thank you. So thanks a minute for everyone for tuning in to today's podcast, Mark's Motivational Podcast, another Authors Tuesday with Carol Weekland. Um, so uh, join us again next week uh, for another podcast. Thanks again, Carol, and take care. Take care. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Hello everyone, Mark here. Thank you for watching another episode of my Authors Tuesday podcast. I recently published a book of children's stories called The Adventures of Larry Lampost and Friends. The book began life as bedtime stories I wrote for my own children. If you'd like to purchase my book, follow the link in the description box below. By buying my book, you are also supporting my podcast series for authors, which is giving a voice to writers in Ireland and across the world. Thank you.